for you. Hello and welcome to the video. In this video guide I will be taking you through all the steps required to understand and brew my very tried and tested recipe for a triple IPA. This recipe has been tweaked and developed over time and in keeping with my channel's recipe policy is only shared now that it is up to standard. I will explain the recipe and demonstrate all of the steps before then finishing up by showing you the end beer and giving my tasting notes. So let's get started. Here is a quick look at this beer's vital statistics which I will explain fully later. This IPA offers approximately 12% ABV and an abundance of fruity hot flavours and aromas. This recipe, like all of my shared recipes, is written by me and can be found in full within the video's description, which can be found underneath the video window when viewed on a desktop computer. You will also find a link to the full recipe on Brewfather which can be used free of charge with some restrictions. Your initial steps with my recipe should be that you convert it before ordering in your ingredients. I have an easy guide to doing this using Brewfather on my channel as shown on screen now. Within this video this recipe is being brewed on a Grainfather G40 to the volume of 19 litres or approximately 5 US liquid gallons. But as part of the conversion process this can be scaled and shaped to suit your own brewing system and volume requirements. Recipe conversion is an essential part of the process for the intended results. Do note that this applies to all recipes you will obtain from others, not just mine. For the very best results you should plan your water profile ahead. If you are a beginner you will be forgiven for not looking at water early on, but I really recommend getting to it once you have some experience. Water profiles for hoppy beers like this one can certainly make a marked improvement as they will accentuate the hops, which in a beer like this one are designed to shine brightly. The water profile shared on screen is directly from Brewfather and works very well for my recipe, but I'm quite sure that other hobby profiles will too. So if you are experienced with water profiles and have a favourite for hobby styles, then always go with your own taste preference. Let's now get on to the brew, starting with the mash. My strike water has been heated to the first mash step temperature of 65 degrees Celsius or 149 Fahrenheit, and I am now starting to add this recipe's grain bill gradually stirring as I go. Because this beer is a strong one, we have more grain than we would normally see in a mash of this volume. For this brew, I'm using the Grainfather G40, which is a 46 litre or 12.15 US liquid gallon size system. So as such it dwarfs a one keg batch brew and allows me to mash this larger grain bill all in one go. This is one of the benefits of a larger brewing system. However, if you have a smaller brewing system then you will be well advised to mash this grain bill using the reiterated method, which I have explained and outlined in a guide for Grainfather G30 users previously as shown on screen, and this can be applied to other smaller brewing systems too, like the Brewzilla 35 litre for example. Let's now look at this recipe in a bit more detail. As you already know, this beer has an estimated ABV of 12.1%, and when this is considered alongside our IBU, this gives us a BUGU ratio of 0.90, which is a good level of bitterness for this style, without it being too bitter for the average drinker's taste. You will also notice that this is predicted to ferment down to 1.007, but to be fair, my results have varied between this number and 1.010 in my test batches and then with this one keg batch. Grain bill wise, we have the bulk of the fermentables coming from parallel malt at 73% of the grist, which is simply our canvas for flavour in this recipe. Dextrose, otherwise known as fruit sugar, is also used at 16% in keeping with this style. Dextrose is a simple sugar that is highly fermentable and its inclusion should help your yeast ferment this beer nice and dry. Sugars are often used in brewing with strong beers to keep alcohol high without adding too much body and thickness to the end beer. An alternative to dextrose is sucrose sugar but there is an ongoing debate going on within brewing circles as to which is best. Some feel that sucrose can lead to sharp undesirable flavours whereas dextrose is much smoother. Personally I do not notice much difference myself between the two, but it is important to taste the difference for your own taste palate. If you're not sure and don't really want to do a test then the best thing to do is to use dextrose. At 5% I have acid malt which is part of my water treatment, but I leave it in the recipe as an easy starting point for you if you wish to use it. If not, then you can simply remove this malt and add a further 5% of palal malt. 
Then at 2% we have crystal malt which is used for colour and carapils at a further 2% which is used for head retention. Then we have a further 2% addition of wheat malt which I use primarily for texture but it will also assist with head retention and formation. After the mash was finished including mash out I lifted the grain basket and I then started my sparge. I prefer to do this manually by hand and the purpose here is to wash out the remaining sugars and top up the liquid volume ready for the boil. Let's now look at the boil phase for this recipe. As soon as you have a boil then it's important to take control quickly by stirring in the protein that has formed on top so that it will drop down. If you do not do this then you are risking a boil over which is never pleasant and because it relates to boiling liquids could cause a burn. Let's now look at the details of this recipe's boil. This is in keeping with my preference for a modern boil time of just 30 minutes and as you can see involves lots of hops as you would expect from a beer of this style. This recipe kicks off with hop additions every 5 minutes from the 20 minute addition stage. This is a method known as continuous hopping and it is a great way to add in lots of great hop flavour. From the Azaka you can expect many fruit flavours that include mango, orange, grapefruit, lemon and pineapple. These hops are simply bursting with tropical fruit and citrus, whereas the mosaic will add in blueberry, tangerine and grapefruit along with floral and citrus qualities. Both hops are rather tropical citrus and also impart a very nice pine flavour too. Towards the end of the boil we also add in the brewing sugar being careful to stir it in. If you are concerned about this burning on the bottom of your brewing system then you can remove some wort in a jug and dissolve the sugar here before pouring the wort back in. At the end of the boil there is a 15 minute hop stand at 80 degrees Celsius or 176 degrees Fahrenheit. I used an immersion chiller to reduce temperature rather than the grandfather supply counterflow chiller as it is fit for purpose and so very fast. This hop stand features Azaka, Brew One and Eldorado. This combination will provide a very pronounced hop flavour and aroma that is very tropical and citrus. For this step I highly recommend the use of either a hop rocket by Blickman or the hop missile by Kegland which I am using here. I have a short video that was recently released that shows how to set these up with the Grainfather G40 cheaply and easily. Whichever brewing system you have this should be possible to use as long as you have a pump. It simply maximises hop flavour and aroma. I then used the G40's counterflow chiller to cool and transfer the wall into my fermenter which in this case is Grainfather's own conical fermenter. Once I then had some wort transferred I then pitched my yeast of choice which for this brew is Lutric Fake. This yeast is available in liquid and dry forms from Omega and I just love the results from it for IPA styles. My method here was a fermentation temperature of 32 degrees Celsius which is just under 70 degrees Fahrenheit but certainly 70 Fahrenheit will work just fine. My recipe says 5 days for fermentation but I suggest holding temperature until you have a stable final gravity for at least 3 days. I left it for 7 days personally from start to finish before transferring. This fermentation was performed without pressure and within the hour fermentation started. Within a few hours the gravity had dropped by 30 points. About 10 hours later the gravity was down to 1.035 and I then added the dry hop of this recipe which is now shown on screen. This dry hop reinforces the fruit bomb elements of this recipe using Azaka, Brew One, El Dorado and Mosaic. In my earlier testing of this recipe I used Azaka and Mosaic but splitting this between these four hops offered a marked improvement in my taste testing for the final cut of this recipe. So let's now look at the process for dry hopping. In this example I'm going to use a hop sock but the procedure is similar with other container types. This starts with boiling the bag. I strongly recommend doing this no matter if the bag has been previously used and cleaned or if it's a brand new one straight out of the packaging. I then add this bag into a clean container and add sanitizer as a further safeguard. This will be the same container that I used to load the hops into. Once the sanitizer has had at least 3 minutes contact time then this is then removed. After this point I then wash and sanitize my hands and this is repeated if I need to touch the bag after touching anything that is not clean and sanitary. These are very important steps to avoid contamination which is all too common when it comes to homebrewers making IPAs because of this step. I then carefully add the dry hops with the bag lining the container being sure that nothing touches the bag except for the hops. Once you have loaded all of your hops into the bag then be sure to tie a nice strong knot to keep all of the hops contained. Then with a clean and sanitary hand the hops are then added into the fermenter being careful not to splash. 
If you choose to use fake yeast like I did with this brew, then adding your dry hops on day two is advised. If you decide to use regular yeast, then I suggest adding your dry hops when your SG is between 5 to 10 gravity points away from your estimated final gravity. The contact time needed for dry hops is just 3 days to be on the safe side, but you can stretch this out to be 5 days without any concerns in general. You may be okay a little over 5 days, but I would suggest it is not worth the risk, and at least could lead to grassy flavours that take a while to fade. Let's now take a look and talk tasting notes for the finished beer, starting with the pour and details. This beer has been in the keg for just over three weeks at this point at an average temperature of 5 degrees Celsius, which is the equivalent of 41 degrees Fahrenheit. This has been under 12 psi of pressure, which is 0.83 bars for this time, and I'm using this pressure for serving too. No attempts have been made to clear this beer, so what you see is natural. This is a beer that I believe tastes best fresh and despite its higher alcohol can be enjoyed very early like other IPI styles. Here are my tasting notes for this one at the just over three week point. Aroma, very citrus and fruity, mostly pineapple, lemon and grapefruit, but there is a real mixed bag on offer here. In terms of flavour on entry, there is an abundance of juicy tropical fruit that usually consists of pineapple, mango, grapefruit and lemon, which moves into a very easy level of bitterness despite the alcohol, which is hard to detect. This is certainly not a boozy triple IPA. There are many other tropical fruits on offer here that become evident as you go through the glass, which keeps this one very interesting. I know that this is a very complex IPA that hides this complexity at first, but this is revealed over time. This is simply due to the many different fruit flavours that can be discovered here. Be careful though, as at 12% ABV, this is one that you do not want to rush through. My final impression is that this is a juicy fruit bomb style triple IPA that hides its alcohol well. There is no hiding the big bold fruity hop flavours though, not that you would want to of course. For those of you that brew this, I would love to hear your impressions and thoughts too within the comments section of this video. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing? For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group, and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store, as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!